are these local ass bitches? On today's show, the bitches discuss the art of following the yellow brick road to happiness. Rosa and Manny share details about leaving their day jobs to pursue whatever tickles their chicken. Nora and politics is like sugar and sriracha sauce. Both are delicious, but will make you hurl if you have them together. Lisa discusses her love of Tootsies. What's that you say? Find out in today's episode. Without further ado... I'm Lisa. I'm Manny. I'm Rosa. I'm Nora. Welcome Welcome to to the the lab. lab. Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. Welcome back everybody. Hi guys, thanks for joining us again. Yes, for episode seven. Seven, hopefully it's lucky number seven. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. Today we're going to talk about life changes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because there are certain periods of your life where um, things do change and hopefully it's for the better. Right. Um, you know, I've, I've had a, you know, a big life change recently. I, uh, I, I used to be the COO of a company here in Chicago. Um, and it was the type of job that, you know, I think is very common in America, the type of job that eats up all your time and your energy mm-hmm. and your life. Um, so basically I made the choice to, to leave that job to pursue music, um, which is something that I've always wanted to do and a passion that I've always had. Um, so that's that's a topic we're going to talk about today, and and some some of us some yes. other members of the local ass bitches also have made life changes. So we're going to talk like about Rosa, today. Yeah. she's she's even so tired to talk about. Oh my yeah. god, yeah. <laughs> so what she's have you done, Rosa? Great. So I was just working at a job for like thirteen years, and just decided to leave that job to pursue hairdressing. Woohoo! Yes, yeah. yay! And she's great, guys. Yeah, she's awesome. Thank I mean, you. the bottom line is life is too short to do bullshit. Yeah, you know? tell me about it. And you know, it's it's not it's not that the job was bad or that you know it was horrible. It was just right. it, there was this other thing that I really wanted to do mm-hmm. and that I had passion for. And you know, life's too short. If you have something like that, it's too short to not go for it. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the balances you've had to create in your life, or you know, what counterbalances have you had to create in your life in order to make that work for you? It's like going from such a big mm-hmm. you know prestigious job and then doing something more on your own that you're Dependent, and you know you have to make ends meet, or you sacrifices. Have to, you have to yeah. sacrifice. So how? Yeah. How ba- well, there? basically, what that job enabled me to do is I can do part. I can work part time now in the same field, but doing consulting work. So I'm able to work part time. I work, you know, much less than I used to, but then I can devote the rest of my time to pursuing music. And I have two bands that I pursue. You know, one's an original indie rock band called Mystery Machine. And then the other band is a, um, a wedding ceremony band, and it's called Manny Petty and the Heartmakers. Yeah. And Lisa's in I'm it in with there. me as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm in that band. Yeah, yeah, which is super exciting. Yeah, it's been really fun doing that, too. But... I think Manny Petty works for me. It's yeah, a great name. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. It is so cute. But, I mean, <laughs> even with, like, I find that very admirable, like, you know, for you. I'm very proud of you guys, you know, for doing that. Because those are, like, big life choices right. that you had to make. And there is sacrifices. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There are sacrifices. There's a lot that... of people that don't have guts to try and do it. Exactly. So, and and for me, it was scarier staying at that job knowing it wow. was killing me. Right. Physically, I even mm-hmm. got sick over that job. Oh, my God. That's you right. Know? So for me, it was even scarier with the thought of staying there, even though I was making a lot of money. Uh-huh. But what's the point if you're exactly. going to you know? What's mm-hmm. the... I mean, right. What can be a bigger signal than actually physically manifesting these really bad energy, mm-hmm. um, you know, these feelings towards the job that you don't want, but you know it's not making your life progress forward. And look what happened, you know? You mm-hmm. got sick, and that's just... And, the, and you know, a big, sickness... like, break for your family. Like, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Man, I gotta rethink my life. And no. that's, you know, that's what a lot of um, Eastern traditions, they see disease as, you know, they say it's dis-ease. Yes. So not being at Un-ease. ease. Yeah. And that's how disease is created. It's, it's your body's, like, homing beacon mm-hmm. telling you that you're on the wrong track mm-hmm. or that you're not doing things that are in line with your true yes. self. And, so, yeah. you know, you, they view disease as, like, much more of an informative thing. Right. You know, when you do get a disease, it's it's forcing you to do something. Or it's forcing you, you know, like, maybe if you, you get a cold, mm-hmm. you know, maybe it's you've been pushing yourself too hard. You right. need to stay home. The only way down. you can stay home from work is to have a cold and, and just sit there. And that's why there's no cure for the common cold, because your body just doesn't want to be cured in that, in that mm-hmm. moment. Because it needs some time. Mm-hmm. I think with Western thought, it just seems like, you know, we're taught and the way we operate is to deny the body 
Absolutely. and the mind. Like it's like there's a disconnect, and we don't take we don't give enough credence to the intuition. Like people don't think about that at all. That they're just no. you know just push through it. Everything is mind, you know, and to our detriment because you know when you really think about it. You know, if, if those, like, if you're not in tune with yourself and with your gut, oh, my God, people think that's crazy talk when you start talking like that. They're like, what? Intuition? What the hell? <laughs> exactly. Because, yeah. because our ego's getting in the way because yeah. we think we can manipulate everything. Right. Yeah. Down to even the chemical balances in our body, the way that makes us think and, mm. you know, feel and see and do. And that's throwing off. Yes. Everything. And just mm-hmm. makes it worse. And then it just bleeds into your, into you know, your family life, your work life, like everything. And everybody's operating this way. Like everybody operates this way. You know, and that's that's something that's really interesting because I, um, you know, I was talking to my boyfriend and he had he had just gone to Burning Man. Oh, yeah. And we're actually oh. going to have him on the show yeah, to yeah, talk about please. Burning Man. Can't yeah. wait. Um, but one thing that I thought his friends and he, I was hanging out with them the other night and they said that when they're at Burning Man, they mm. talk about, like, oh, what are you going to do when you go back to the default reality? Oh, wow. So mm-hmm. default reality That's is awesome. this, what we're living right now. So it's, so with the way they see it, it's not true reality. It's just, it's the reality you're born into and that you're forced to survive in. Yeah. It's not necessarily the real reality. Because huh. when they're at Burning Man or if you're at a yoga retreat or if you're at somewhere mm-hmm. like that, you feel like you're in, you're actually in tune with yourself and you're actually... Wow. It's like your true essence is your being expressed. Your true essence is there and yeah. expressed. and. And hopefully you take some of that back into your life that's and so incorporate awesome. it. But that's interesting that they say the default reality. <laughs> that's They're cool. like, oh yeah, that's... we're going back to default. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, true. It's because, you know, yeah. the difference that you feel is, you know, when you would remind me have a break from work and then you have to go back. Yeah. And you have to be this other person. You have to be a, a shell of, you know, who you are just mm-hmm. to keep peace or just mm-hmm. be part of a cog. And it's really, yeah. it's a really difficult thing to deny yourself. Right. And you know, and you just have to see it as part of the process and like I'm I'm glad I did it and I'm glad because it's led me to oh, yeah. to be more free now mm-hmm. in a part of my life when I am ready to pursue what I really want. Um, even though it was really hard and it was some of the hardest years of my life. But I remember I look back and I just think of how much of a shadow of myself yeah. I was. Yeah. You know, and just So you needed myself. to go through that darkness or through that pressure to release what you feel was good for yourself. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And to, and to discover what's important. You need you to know? pop that shit like a zest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And Rosa, you're just at the beginning of it. Oh, you yeah. just yeah. did it. It's freaky. So, yeah. yeah. So, right. Uh, yeah. Take heed of what he's got to say in his experiences and learn from that. Yeah. Because right. I'm not saying it's like, oh, I have had this revelation. I'm so happy right now. Right. But it's... it's really rough. You've got both oh, hands in the pot road. right now still. Yes. Because you're working yeah. your old job still a little bit. Right. But a lot of your time and energy still being spent on pursuing your dream and you're thinking about different things, whatever, cut, cut you know, yeah, styles, yeah. colors, all of these things that, you know, you need for your on-the-job training, so to speak. Right. So, you know. So it's, 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 you know, it's been crazy. It's like a lot of up and down. and Yeah. Up and down work, up and down feelings. Emotions. Feelings and emotions. You're just like, what the hell am Is I doing? Is it because doing? it's physically, t- it's taking a physical toll on you? No, I think it's just everything after you've been somewhere. It would be like how you're at your job yeah. right now and mm-hmm. now you're going to be self-employed. Right. You know what I mean? And you're kind of responsible for, you know, having things right. and, and, you know. Yeah. Like everything, you got to take care of everything. You know, like even when you when you think right, about, right, you got to save every receipt. Yes, you, have to, you know, you have like to the taxes, everything. Yeah, right. So it's yeah. just a big change. Yeah, it's a huge change. It's completely different than. than so what you, you go know. through. I mean, I go through. Like, do I really want that? Do right. I, you know, you're kind of like. And I think you'll probably do that every day. You yeah. know what I mean? That's what every people day, say. Yeah, for a long time. Even people that own their own businesses. You know, God. it's just. But those are the people that drive everything. You know True. what I mean? So it's True. like we're we're part of that now. You know, we're we're part of driving something new, putting something new into the world. Yeah, I was just talking, like it's crazy. Yeah. Speaking it's awesome. of that, yeah, isn't that crazy? Because that gives birth to something else. Yes, it's awesome. Well, I was gonna yeah. say like even thoughts, like the power of oh thoughts. yeah, like you know, right now we're sitting here and you know we're eating stuff in front of us, and there, there's like a beer bottle in front of me, right, and a, and a, a plate, mm-hmm. and at one point this bottle and this plate were just a thought in somebody's yes, mind yes, right. and that person had the ingenuity to think hey I'm going to make this thing that's in my head mm-hmm. 
and they made it and now it's reality and it's here in the physical world right. and that's with everything it's not just with like right. physical objects yes. mm-hmm. it's with creativity it's with jobs it's with your future it's with all that stuff mm-hmm. so the power of the mind is really incredible when you think about it like oh, everything absolutely. you see around you used to just be an idea yeah. in somebody's yeah. head that's and somebody like, had the guts yeah. to be like I'm gonna put this shit out there it's like the right. construct of our of this plane that we're on this mm-hmm. is the, the way that you know this three dimensional plane works and thoughts I believe have energy for sure absolutely you know it's like yeah so did you did you have any of those feelings or was yours more just like yeah this is great this is what I need to do or um, were you kind of like what the hell am I doing oh totally I still have that every day oh yeah what the hell am I doing but um, but I what comforts me is that I'm moving forward. As long as I know I'm moving forward and that it's a process and that every day I get better at what I do. And, and the thing that comforts me the most is that I can always go back to that type of job. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To, to the type of job I have or something similar. I can always go back to that. And it's going to be waiting for me somewhere, you know? Um, you know and it's, Don't you feel that way too, though? Like what you've been doing and what you, you know, you can take the skills that you've been learning now for the past 13 years and um, apply that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Of That's course. True, yeah. Of course. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I don't think you have anything to be worried about. Like, both of you guys, like, and then that's another thing, too, that's wonderful is that you both have such a great support system from your family, mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. friends, you know, like, that's also very important. I mean, imagine, you know, somebody who doesn't have that, it's even scarier. I could see now why right. people yeah. don't, yeah. why people are afraid to just do something like that. Absolutely. It's scary. It's, okay. Of course it is. And, you know, a majority of people probably won't do that, you know, or that's why people have midlife crisis. Yeah. You know, we, we just had it a little sooner. Right, um, right, right. But a lot of people have been, you know, kind of denying their true, what they really want, or yeah. their true desire, so that's why sometimes it comes out like people in that, life. Yeah, like people that I talk to, even like clients, they're like, holy yeah. shit. Yes, because maybe even they have had yeah, those thoughts, but they're like, never they're done that, right, yeah. so you, you know, there's lots to be said, you both are very courageous, it's not something that a lot of people can't right. even fathom being mm-hmm. taking the first step on mm-hmm. you know I mean or some people who just are put themselves in a position where they can't like me you know so it's really really difficult oh right if you, you have know? children right like yeah. yeah absolutely so you know what you're doing is difficult but you're doing something that you know you're contributing to your self worth and your self love and you know this is what you want to do and that it's right you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In, in the beginning, though, right? In the beginning, though, it just has the opposite effect on mm-hmm. me, mm-hmm. where you're just like frightened. Yes. Yeah. So I'm mm-hmm. hoping that mm-hmm. there, it, it, it'll be worth it. Yes. And already you feel better. Like I could already tell. You know what I mean? It's like because we're all like, yeah, yeah, we're I mean, close enough to know. You know, it's like especially like even with Manny, like you could tell your whole demeanor is different. You know, like you you could just tell. It's like because you're. Anything, like anything in the creative yeah, field yes. is, is kind of yes. It's up a lot and down of up and day. down, and yeah. it could Always. be. It could be. It is uh, more often than not gut wrenching, heart wrenching. I mean, like for and that's me why too. It's so good, exactly. <laughs> and that's yeah. why I think I put off sometimes yeah. writing material. Even you know, like I know I'll have something in me, and, and you know what I mean. It's like, and, and I'll just kind of procrastinate about it because I know that it's going to make me go somewhere. That's you know, kind mm-hmm. of you know, I'm going to have to deal with it then because it's cathartic. What keeps calling you back, or is it that one thing that you did that was really good? Like, say you wrote an excellent song, yeah. and you're like, man, that made me feel excellent. Yeah. So you'll write a bunch of shitty ones, but yeah. you know that one is going to come out. Is going to make that feeling come back. Oh, so yeah. that's what you're always chasing. That's true, because but, it's, it is. Because when that comes right. out that way, you know it. There's no denying that feeling. You know what I mean? That, and every time it happens, you're like, this will never happen again. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I'll never write a good song ever again. Or even and, like, every I'm single time. A riff and then I'm like, and then I'm just like, oh, I forgot it. Yeah. <laughs> Son of a bitch. See, creative stuff is hard. Me. It's yes. hard. Or whatever yes. in a way that I know. It's it. illogical. Yes. 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 And there we go again. There to, we're the intuitive. It comes with your inner knowing that is really hard to explain. It's so abstract. Mm-hmm. You can't really put it into words. And yeah. it's always subjective. That's what makes it so cool because that's why I like art is that... Um, any type of art, whether it be painting. I mean, of course, like, we're more well-versed in music. And, and I like the written word very much, mm-hmm. you know, like, whether it be, like, in a book or, you know, even through, through a movie or, or, or a show or something like that. It, it, there are certain things that, like, really, really hit you hard. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. 
You know, like that's um, that's what I'm always looking for is that you know feeling like re- not necessarily recreating the feeling. No, like but just finding it through different yeah, avenues. Yes, yes, like yes. entering through different doors and like still getting that same um, feeling. It's and, like yeah, you know, of accomplishment of just love for you know of connection or whatever mm-hmm. it is yes but you know it's because you can some people just choose one path to do right, that right and then we're the kind of people that like to explore it from different angles yes and, and that's what it is it's about the exploration because yeah. you'll hit sometimes you will hit upon something that's just amazing you know like mm-hmm. there's this one i was actually reading this yesterday i was telling rosa yeah it came across um i don't even know how i was reading something and there was an ad for this book called The Art of Racing in the Rain. Mm. And have you ever have you ever heard of it? I, I remember seeing it before at my, like my local Starbucks or maybe it was Barnes & Noble or something like that. And there's um, a yellow lab on the cover. So I'm like, oh, shit. All right. You know, anything that has to do with animals, I am like, you know, mm-hmm. just completely become unglued. So basically the premise of the story. So what did I do last night? I'm totally like, okay, I'm going to read the sample. And what happened? The first like two pages, I'm already like bawling. Oh. I'm like, there's no way I can read this book. Okay. But, it's, uh, but the premise <laughs> sounds so beautiful. Basically, it's about this, you know, dog. His name is Enzo. Like how so. awesome is that? Italian name. Oh my god, how awesome like you is that? Something else to do. <laughs> yeah, with, right? exactly. Yeah. And basically, this it's from his point of view about um, living with this family. And there's you know like the the man is like his main guy, you know, like the owner, and he's a race car driver. And uh, Enzo likes watching TV. He also has learned and gleaned a lot about, you know, like uh, information about the human condition through TV. And also, and he's extremely intelligent. He's obsessed with opposable thumbs. And he knows that when he comes back, he's going to be a man. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's like really, it sounds hilarious. Wow, but this man connects with this cat so much. Dog. Oh, Dog. Dog. Yes, Sorry, yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. Oh, babies. Yeah, well, it could very well be a cat, you know, but it's like... Maybe he's a cat in a dog's life. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, Who he, knows he's going to be a person? He's like, next, it's human. Exactly. <laughs> and it's just, it already, I read, and it's written well. You know what I mean? Like, I, it, you know, so I really, so of course, like, I'm reading it, and it was like a few pages, and I was already bawling. Aww. You know, because, like, it was at the, at the point, like, what I was reading, it starts off with the end of his life. And he's saying, you know, like, I, I, I hope, like, I want him to know that it's okay to let me go. And I'm so excited because oh, I know I'm going to come back. I know I'm going to come back and I'm going to be a man and I'm going to be able to shake his hand one day. Oh, and I'm going to be able to tell him. Flag. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, right. Can you please tell yes. me? Yes. And it's like, and, and, and I wish that I would be able to remember all the memories and retain all these memories that I have as Enzo. Because then I can even say to him, like, Enzo says hi and I will walk briskly away. And, ho- you know what I mean? Like, stuff like this already. <laughs> <I'm a tree. laughs> So already I'm getting like I'm getting for Clint now as I'm like saying this. So I mean it's it's very beautiful. And then sometimes I wonder too, like the difference between animals and humans and the animal mind, obviously, because we can only speculate on what they're right, thinking. Right. You know, like this particular book is is humanizing the dog. Like it's like Absolutely. the way we think, you know. Right. And then, you know, but a lot of times like when I when I look at an animal and the way that they behave and the things that they do, they're so much more dignified than we are. You know what I mean? Like in Absolutely. the way that, yeah, they're just very honest and truthful. And, and they're always in the present moment. Yes. They're always in tune with what they desire and what they want. Exactly. You know, we're, we're not like There's that. no pretense. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. They are who they are. Mm-hmm. That's it. Just like those rhinoceros that like to All loop with their poop. <laughs> yes. They are. I was like, that's me, bitch. Yeah. It's, this is how I, I attract a mate. This is how I attract a mate. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> and they do not care. No. no. <laughs> They don't care yeah. about the cat though. So of course, you know, like in terms of that, like that was really beautiful to me. Like it was beautifully written, but I can't read that shit. No, like there's no way I will I don't be. Think I could read that either. I will be a big mess, like by the end, like halfway through. Yeah. I mean, that that reminds me of like past life regression and the idea yeah. that you've lived past lives and yes. that you've had other lives as you know whether it's human. Yes. Or, you know, and there's I I think there's a lot of validity to that. There's yeah. there's an author. Her name is um, Dolores Cannon. And she oh, was yeah. a psychiatrist for a long time, um, and she would do like um, regression therapy on people, just like childhood regression. Like she would go oh, into people's damn. childhoods yeah. and all this stuff. And what ended up happening was sometimes when she would do these regressions, people would remember something that just wasn't from this. Like they would oh. remember like this other thing that seemed like a dream. Okay. They would remember like another life. They were a different person. They were whatever. So she just kind of wrote it off as like, oh, it must have just been something in their subconscious oh, gotcha. or whatever it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But as she started doing it, as it started happening more, she really looked into it. And she was able to like verify certain like 
time periods that they were talking about, certain places they lived. Mm. And oh, they, they had so much detail about what they knew. Wow. Like they were living in like North Africa and like in Algeria somewhere during like, a, I don't know, some kind of invasion or something. Right. And then she was able to verify and that. And it was factual. Factual, yeah. So That's she's crazy. written a lot of books about that. And each book gets more and more deep into like, you know, the different types of people she's she's so um, had messages with. So Dolores Cannon, really interesting stuff. Yeah. You know, maybe not for everyone, but I think it's super interesting. Oh, that is interesting. And that's why, like, because I have no idea what is out there. And I love thinking about what might be out there, you know. And I'm not, you know, Einstein. I'm not, like, you know, like, totally, like, theory of general relativity. Like, all that stuff. Like, you know, like, in layman's terms, you could kind of understand. Maybe I could kind of understand, like, what they're talking about. And it is just... Unbelievably and it's even hard, right, in layman's term for yes. us to wrap our heads yes. around it because yes. it's just so enormous. And, oh, God. you know, right? Or you just feel your skull yeah. swell because <laughs> you're just like, oh my God, I gotta think about it. It hurts this way, that way. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, it's and amazing. Can you imagine them. You know? Oh, I mean, totally. Like, whatever. Like they're even bamboozled. Mm -hmm. You know, with a lot of things that they're finding out, and it makes me smile. That they're bamboozled mm -hmm. because for the longest time people are like, nope, this is science. These are the laws of physics. The and five that's senses it. and that's yes, it. yes, right. yes. And it always makes me smile when they're like, well, yeah, you know what? Ego, it, yes, exactly. It always like it makes me almost like laugh out loud, like LOL because mm -hmm. LOL. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exclamation. That might be ego with you know when you're freaking out about losing or changing a life. Hell that yeah, be, it is because you know your ego is no. That's what I was. That's what yes, I, you know absolutely. Yeah, the hates change. It wants status quo. Yes, you know? right. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I the agree. only thing you can depend on in life is that things change. You know? Yeah, the only constant the only thing. thing is change, which is you know. I know like, it's cliche, but it's so true. Yeah, it is. So I guess when you're I'm trying to finally accept that because in when my life when in. My younger days, my life was never the same. It was always changing, always changing. All right. I had a lot, you know, I've moved different times, just had a, a lot of life situations yes. that have just been not normal. And so, um, yeah, yeah. To me, right now, now I understand because I had some stability in my life, mm. because, you know, having kids and stuff like that. Mm. Now I get it. Mm. You know, that interesting. Just, yeah, it's changing. Yeah. But when you Wait. make the change yourself. Yeah, because then, God forbid, if something different. goes wrong, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Then you're totally like, that's what you're afraid of, that something like that is going to happen and that you made the wrong choice. Mm -hmm. I, can totally I do that, that every day. Yeah. Just, whatever. I can, like, I cannot wake up tomorrow and my kids where they're going to have to live. But yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, that could drive, I can go nuts. In a that's true. Yeah. That's true. You let that take you over and... Yes. Yeah. There's always going to be something to freak out about or be worried about. Yeah. And something can happen at any moment. But For you sure. Just, you just gotta like, mm -hmm. you know, push forward, and that, that and that's one thing with you, Nora, that I totally have so much respect for is that like, like I can barely take care of myself. So like, oh, the fact the that children, you can like yeah. take care of you know your kids and they're great kids and they're mm -hmm. so smart. Um, that's a big deal, you know, and that's that's awesome. That's great too that you're able mm -hmm. to do that and like. I try, but I have a lot of help too. You know, my for mom sure. And my, Thank God. Stuff. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. My sister helps a lot. They yes. also love the Tootsies. Oh, man. Oh, the doggy. You know, oh, the Tootsies? The, have, yeah, we, tootsie. have we used that word before? You know, I don't know if we ever addressed that one. Tootsies is, is basically all animals. I call them Tootsies. Anything furry and fluffy. Yeah, anything furry and fluffy. Even reptiles, I guess, sometimes they're scary. Tootsies, yeah. you know what I mean? Sometimes it could be Tootsies with a D. But it, yeah, Tootsies, Tootsies. And I, and I think Rosa came but up no with that. Tootsies. Yeah, no what? <laughs> I remember Rosa said it once. And I don't remember how it even mm. came about. I think it might have been her cat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she just like just said it, and it stuck. You know, so basically that's what it is. So I just love that you had different um, adjectives for the type of tootsies. So it's like dictionary <laughs> for animals. <laughs> Yeah, because there's like human tootsies too, like babies. Yes, yes, yes. Can be like a human tootsie. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Do you know what's weird? What's weird? Mike's Heart Lemonade has 5% alcohol. Uh huh. And I've never, ever gotten buzzed. Okay. Off of a Mike's Heart Lemonade, ever. Yeah. How come everything else that has 5.9%, you get kind of buzzed? What is the deal? The point with Mike's Heart. Maybe your body no. reacts to the sugar in a Maybe different way. Maybe. Well, they're both pretty sugary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You know, yeah, has anybody there. ever gotten even the least bit buzz from a Mike's Hard Lemonade? Not, not for me, speaking uh, personally, not yeah, that I remember. Not recently, no. I never have. It's okay. a hook. It's a hook. <laughs> it really is. There's no liquor. It's I'm the Lou Malnati. <laughs> <laughs> the Lou Malnati. <laughs> the Lou Malnati's. 
Luminati's is a, a famous pizza place here in Chicago. But yes, and that's we'll how about it as is it Luminati. Lou, Mel- what, Lou Malnati's, and I guess Nora's <laughs> sister said that sometimes she forgets how to say Illuminati. So, so she's <laughs> Lou Malnati's controls everything. <laughs> Over here in Chicago, that butter crust. <laughs> it's in everything. It's so good. Is it a it continuous is. sausage or is it both? <laughs> 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 oh man so good uh, yeah but one of the one of the other topics we want to talk about um now you know i hope this isn't really a non sequitur but one thing we were talking about you know there's a lot of th- stuff going on in the news right now uh. obviously there's a lot of politics going on and um you know a lot of pe- it's it's stuff that gets a lot of people uncomfortable and you know and i one thing i find fascinating about politics is what do you do when you know somebody that's that has a completely different political view than you do? Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and you know you're not going to convince each other of anything otherwise. Right. You know, obviously, mm-hmm. like there's there's certain people. Obviously, there's a lot of people in the middle though that maybe you can talk to and maybe just don't follow it as much. And you know, they they could they are more they open. could see it they're right. More they're open. more open. Yeah. But what do you do when you have a family member, a loved one, maybe even yeah. your partner? Yeah. Um, and what happens when you just have absolutely different views? So I was listening to NPR, <clears throat> and they had the most fascinating thing about brainwaves. They did a study about brainwaves. I don't know if we've talked about it on this show. Um, but they did a study of brainwaves. They, they measured, um, they, they exposed people to, like, really violent scenes, like mm. Holocaust scenes, like violent oh, movies, mm-hmm. things like that, right? Mm-hmm. And they would measure their brainwaves. Mm-hmm. And they found... That people that had a more visceral reaction mm. to those scenes mm. tended to have, like, almost like 90%, tended to be more conservative. Interesting. And people that had less of a visceral reaction tended to be more liberal. Wow. And it was really, like, Wait, up to 90% what? accurate. It's like a fear, like adrenaline. So the fear, yeah. the fear, um, the fear impulse. Yes. It's tended either. to be more conservative. Like, your, your wow. views, your political views tended to be more conservative. That's fascinating. So, so, which is really interesting because it also makes sense with the type of politics it is. Because, obviously, yes. liberal politics is all about, you know, I'm concerned about my fellow man. I'm concerned about the society as a whole. I want to, yes. you know, if I take care of you, I'm taking care of myself. It's right. all one thing. Right, right, right. Whereas, you know, maybe more conservative politics is in the individual. In the individual, for sure. And in protecting individual rights mm-hmm. and, you know, kind of what, what I do is important. Yes. And everybody else should be empowered to yes. help themselves. Yes, 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 yeah. Correct, correct, correct. But it's also, you know, it makes sense with the politics and the way it is. God, that's, so, that's you know, our brains are sort of predisposed in some ways for one political view or the other. That's insane. Which kind of is interesting. That's very interesting. And you, some people, is it nature or nurture, though? I mean... It's probably both, mm-hmm. you know? Cause, mm-hmm. But then you have, like, super, like, maybe Republican parents, right? And their kids yes. might be yes. super gay liberal. Like James Cameron Mitchell, who created Heavy yeah. and the Angry Inch. Yeah, you see that all His the time. His parents are super ultra-conservative. Yeah. But or like Alex P. Keaton, Alex that his P. parents Keaton. were like flower children. Yeah, and he comes out family like ties, a, right? yeah, family yeah. ties, and he comes uh-huh. out like come up, comes up like a Reaganite, like loved mm-hmm. Reagan yeah. and Nixon and like all this stuff. You know, so it's kind of and that's where the comedy was. But you see that that does happen. That has happened absolutely. Like if you married a Reaganite. Oh yeah, now that would be that would be interesting. You better hide the knife, David. <laughs> 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 I mean, I don't even know how. Oh, that would go. The sorry. sex would probably. Spoon. I bet the sex would probably be good. You think? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like it's more so opposite. Huh? What would be good? I'm sorry. The sex. sex. Oh. The yeah. Sex. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because like you're like fuck you. Yeah, you're like. It's like you. I hate your view on Planned Parenthood. <laughs> 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 But, but one thing I, I've been contemplating is that, like, you know, because I'm very, you know, I'm a, you know, I like politics. Right. It's, when people ask me what my favorite sport is, I say politics. Yeah, for real. Because I just think it's so interesting. I'm really into it. Yeah. Um, and some people are not, you know. I'm sure. not. And, and Nora's not at all. I'm not. You know, and, and. I think everyone's taking a different ladle from the same nasty, dirty trough. Yeah. And, and I there's definitely don't truth disagree to that. with that. I don't disagree. Yeah. But you have to keep in mind, Nora, that there was a campaign in the 80s, mostly in the 90s, and even today, to get people to not vote. Oh, get people see? Yeah. to think that politics is as evil yes. as possible. Yes. Because the less of us that are voting, the more the power yes. brokers Absolutely. can have power. Absolutely. So there was a huge movement for that. And it's really subtle. 
Yes. But that's why that's Speaking why you get the people that are like anti government. The yeah. government doesn't yes, work. Yes, 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 the yes, government yes. sucks. We hate so the like government. That was very Reagan. Messaging. That was it's like a very one Reagan of his thing. yeah, it was a very it was like one of his like famous speeches like about like basic basically the gist of it is you know, like, don't worry about what we're doing. The government, like, we'll, we'll take care of everything. Like, Just nothing don't, to see here. Like, yeah, 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 totally nothing to see here. Well, use your credit cards, go shopping, see? live your life. And you know what it made me think of? Because I did hear when he was the governor of California, he was, like, one of the first ones to be a major proponent of cutting funding for colleges mm-hmm. because he didn't want an educated, young populace that, you know, and I remember, like, somebody had read somewhere that he said, or no, actually, it wasn't a show. Tom Hartman, I love Tom Hartman. He's on uh, oh, Progressive yeah. Radio, and he says that that was his main his main thing was why should I support funding these college students that will grow up to uh, mm-hmm. object my policies? I'm like, oh, that's great. That's our chief concern here, yeah, right. you know. So, be, so, yes. so again, that's my archetype, the Michael no, Stivic from All in the Family. Michael Mike Stivic, Stivic, Mike Stivic was very. They were super liberal, very educated. Like you know, they you know they were. Um, activists and, and stuff, mm-hmm. they don't want that. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times when you really think about it, those activists were ended up being liberal. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, well, mm-hmm. that's bad for business. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and not to delve too, too much into politics, but one one thing I think is interesting is if, you know, if you are really strong, have really strong political opinions, the next time you're with somebody that doesn't have those opinions, yeah, I think a more, rather than trying to convince each other of the other's point of view, which I think is kind of an act of futility a lot of times. Yeah. Try, I, I think an interesting exercise would be to try to explain to each other what you think the other's view is. Yeah. I so think like, brilliant. I would love just to, to like... Just to make sure you're understanding each just other. Just to make sure you're understanding I, each other. That, you can do that with anything. With anything. Yeah. With anything. Especially and I think both people would yeah. walk away with a f- better understanding of what even what they believe. Mm-hmm. You know? Because there are certain times when, like, there's certain things that, I, you know, I thought I did not believe in, but I thought there was benefits to it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. There's certain parts of, like, conservative conservative ideology, which I don't think are bad, you know? Yeah, I agree. A lot of it, I, I agree. Most of it I disagree with, but there are some things where I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. And Exactly. You know, I think that's that's interesting. Even, like, me, you know, I, I'm totally somebody that believes that, you know, government should do things that you just don't give a shit about. Like, I don't want to have to worry about how my neighbor gets to work. Yeah. That's why there's public transport. Right, you know? right, right, right. I don't want to have to worry about, like, you know, the post office. Like, the government should take care of that. The Actually, roads. like, the government totally <laughs> sucks. <laughs> Motherfucker, <laughs> the government totally sucks. I love that song. But, but I think there's certain things that the government is good at and should do. Because I don't give a shit. I don't want to, I don't want to like, have to go outside and build a road for myself to get yeah, to work. Yeah, right. That's totally, like, like very libertarian. Yeah. Where it's just like, yeah. what are you going to do about, like, stop signs? Yeah, like, you're, it's like, like uh, basically, yeah. like you can't you can't play basketball without any rules. You can't play yeah. football without rules. Right. You know, and like a libertarian point of view would yes. be that there shouldn't be right. Or should be very limited. Right. Right. And there shouldn't be any kind of like infringement. Yes. By the anybody's government. rights. Which yeah. there's there's certain validity to that. Like we don't want to exactly. live in like a totalitarian no state. Way. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Exactly. But, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you yeah, I believe that you know there are there are certain certain limits and that there's certain things that government should do. Right. Um, okay, so like what, what about those big uh, jumps mm-hmm. between what <laughs> the message that they're telling you and what they're actually doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now that I think about That's a lot. A huge. You know, I mean, and, you know, really, like, and, and, like the, the president and stuff like that being just like a figurehead. one person, right, it's just a figurehead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not one person that's making all these fucking decisions. Mm-hmm. You all are all idiots. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, just, mm-hmm. it's too much. It's like, to me, it's like a soap opera. Ah, it really yeah. is. It's he, she, and she, she, and she, she said this. He said that. <laughs> and we're going to have news in the morning all day about he said this. And she yeah. Said, Who the fuck cares? That's Go to work. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Go do something. Yes. If that's, you know, if your intention was to serve the public, then serve the fucking that's public. That's another thing, too. Career politicians. It's not how it used to be. That's not how the founding of the country, you know, like, like developed. You know what I mean? Like, you, it was like you would go to a job. You would you would serve for a couple of years as like say a senator or something like that. Then you would go back to your own life and then somebody yeah, else. But, would I, come in. but I guess like when people say, "Oh, I hate career politicians," like what do you do? Like if you go into politics, then you're going to be jobless. Like well, that's I mean, the thing. It you, was like, a public so service. Like well, how do you do that was. unless you're rich? You know what I mean? Like if you're a rich person, yeah, you could do that. But if you don't have the means to do that and you want to get into politics, you should be able. No, you'll to still get a salary for yourself. No, you do still have a salary, but then when you, you, leave. you would go right. No, no, no. Like when you're there. Oh, sure. You know, like you get paid, like by the government. You know. Yeah, when but when there. you leave, it's like I mean. I mean, I don't know if it, like how. Like I'm going to leave my job, my life for four years just to serve. And then what do I do when I get back? 
You know what I mean? Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, I guess, but it's like it's it's totally different because career there's there's interest that they have and kickbacks that they get. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's for sure. That's for that's sure. That's why. That sense. That's why I to yeah. me. They all drain from the same nasty, dirty truck. Right. That's, I but mean, like, I, I think, I think some of them, yes, but there's some of them that are so fucking crazy. Yeah. That if they get into power, things are going to shit. Like, okay, when Bush was president, yeah. I personally believe that he sent this country into a downward spiral. Mm. You know, and there's, there's other people that would be on the other side of the political aisle that feel the same way about Obama, but I right. would totally disagree right. with them. Right. But I do not want somebody like that to get back in the White House, drag us and into another war, cut more. taxes on all the rich people, mm. and screw the rest of us over. And I do have to say that I wouldn't have been able to make the life choice I've made without Obamacare. Right. Yeah. Because right. I had a pre-existing condition. Same thing with I had cancer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would have never been able to leave my job and get health insurance right. and start like a new business. And that's the other without thing. Without that. What I was just right. saying about the public service, like if there was some sort of a construct where you would be able to go back to your job. Now, as it stands, it wouldn't. People would be like, fuck you. You're not, are you kidding me? You haven't been here for four fucking years? And you know what I mean? Like, it, like it would have to be completely built up from the bottom. Like, it's completely convoluted and fucked up now. You know, like, now the way that it is is the way that it's set up, and everything would have to just be destroyed and rebuilt. Mm-hmm. You know? But thank God for Obamacare. That's all yeah. i got to say. I know people diss it, but thank God. Because you could, oh, yes. you could have a pre-existing condition before. And you're like, oh, sorry, you had cancer. Yeah, you can't get right. yeah exactly. And or you have are. to pay $2,000 a month. Yes. Like, well, that's, that's ridiculous. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's why sometimes there are just some things that I choose to opt out in life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and thinking about it anyway. Not that, you know, I'm never going to use these services and stuff. So there, you know, there's a little bit of hypocrisy there. I understand that about myself. That, you know, maybe I'm going to use some of these, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, things that programs I, like for, programs yeah. or whatever or my children are or you know, my grandchildren are but i just can't wrap my head around it like i just want to know if point a really means point b. oh yeah it's so convoluted and it's but not, it's not yeah and, it never and they do that on purpose they try to make it yeah. as complicated as yeah. possible yeah. that the average person just tunes out you're just like oh my mm-hmm. god it's too much i yeah. do I really do. I just, it's never been something it's that's really... It's a mess. Really, and that's why know, it's a mess. And I think too much of something like that, which is mm-hmm. crazy and everything and everywhere, and you know, too, there's too much individualism, I can't. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot. You never it's a lot of egos. Out of it. Yeah. And, right, it's egos, it's what I want, you know. So you have these small groups of people that think the same way. Fine, whatever, but right. it's never going to be the majority, so... Well, my, my advice for somebody that's not, not political or is not really into politics, if you are going to vote, which I hope I hope you do for the next presidential election, yeah. you should vote for the person that speaks to your hopes and not your fears. Mm. That's that's my thing. Yeah, but that's just a speechwriter giving them a fancy speech. No, 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 no. Right, like, But what I'm saying is you get a feeling off of when somebody speaks, obviously. Like, there there is a gut reaction that you have when they speak. Mm. You know, and you should, you should listen to that feeling, obviously. I mean, you should definitely listen to what they have to say and what they want to do. Um, but if they're speaking, if they're evoking fear in you, yeah, yeah. don't, don't go with that. Try mm-hmm. to go with somebody that inspires you. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's my advice. That's my advice. If you're not political, just mm-hmm. to, you know, obviously learn what they're talking about, see what they're saying. Exactly. Because I think that's hopes. the problem because we've been taught like in our generation, because that's all we know is Reaganism. That's when we were, even though we were born in the seventies, you know, like, or I, well, me and you were, and they were right. born in the eighties. They were totally like in the Reagan, but that's what we grew up as, you know. Like my my dad tells me that all the time. He's like, Lisa, you don't remember how it was before. You have no idea. The country yes, is completely yes. fucking different than it was in the sixties and the seventies. He's mm-hmm. like, you have no idea, you know. So and it's and it's like, yeah, that's that's true. This is all we know. Mm-hmm. Those bitches. <laughs> 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 and and that's my point is that there's. <laughs> That, like, that's what we've been taught in our generation not to worry about that stuff and not to get informed, like Mike Civic. You went out of your way to get informed. Like, my grandpa, you know, like, even, you know, he was very, you know, World War II vet. Like, you know, very, into, like, he would vote every single election, even the local stuff. Like, he was always like, ah, it's voting day. You know, like, now I, I wouldn't even know. Like he, Now it's overwhelming. I mean, yeah. you can just get so much information about anything you ever wanted to know about. And yes. it's so overwhelming. Yes. It's too much. And, it's, and then it gets right. Then it's too much. Then it's like, who you believe? Who yeah. you believe? And then any Everyone's topic, like you can find 10 people that believe in the topic, 10 people that don't believe in the topic. And, and that's why you get, like, the global warming deniers. Oh, yeah, yeah, Because yeah. they find, like, the, the 1% of scientists that will 
that will validate what they believe. Yeah, because they and they'll wholeheartedly pockets. believe well, that. They're not really scientists. Yeah. <laughs> Like even like stuff like bike helmets. There's people that like oh, create yeah. stupid shit about not. They, they they claim that it's safer not to wear a bike helmet. Right. What? Because yeah, yeah. Because they, they it, create it these cockamamie your, arguments. Yeah, it like limits your peripheral vision. Yeah. Which is so yeah. not true. Yeah. That's the definition of politics for me, right yeah. there. Uh-huh. You know, like there's common sense. And, and that's why you message. go with your inner. You have to dive deep within yourself and be like, yeah. is this really true? Like, mm-hmm. is it? Come on. Mm-hmm. Like you're gonna tell me that. By protecting, by putting something in my head that's protecting me, that's not safer. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. Nope. Like, let's the, talk to doctors. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Let's not talk to the, um, you know, people that make helmets or yeah. that want the people to make helmets. Or what. But I did stupid. hear one person say, mm-hmm. like, before it was like, okay, well, if I got into, like, a really bad accident, my head is protected and is like, and I'm, you know, total, like, quadriplegic and then I'm unhappy, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, I mean, you know, that. in that case, it's like, then I would rather go out. You know, and it's like, yeah, and, yeah I guess. Right. But, to the, like, the yeah, head don't. Head totally. The <laughs> totally. But it's just like, I mean, I don't know. You know, because that's what they're doing. Like, you know, limit your peripheral vision and blah, blah, blah. It's not stuff, I mean, not for me. I'm like, for me, I would what you wear do the is, helmet. You know how to, you know how to experiment that? You put on your helmet yeah. and you're like, and then you take it off. Yeah. And then you say, did anything change? <laughs> no, nothing changed. Yeah. Well, and there's, I mean, there's so many different types of helmets. I think at least yes. talking about yeah. the motorcycle. Like, yes. I have the The motorcycle. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They mm-hmm. have the one that's just like on the top. Yeah. Well, Illinois, where we live, is only one of three states that doesn't require a helmet because we have a really strong anti-helmet lobby right mm. it's, it's right it's, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah meanwhile you know scrape and splatter mm-hmm. brains on my 90 you know every other day mm-hmm. yeah that makes me nervous. Seriously, that's 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 crazy. I mean, yeah. if you get into an accident, you're dead. Right. 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 And and you know, a lot of guys, I will say that I know that ride are um, you know, there's a certain dignity in saying exactly. I'm not going to wear my helmet exactly. because I don't have to and there's yes. like a certain macho thing right, to it. Right. But if it were required, they would wear it. Right. But because it's not, they're never going to wear one. Right. Right. You know, and it's just it is what it is. I wish the person that I hit when I got out of John's car oh. was wearing a helmet because I thought I scalped them. Oh, just- <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Was it a bike rider? It was a bike yes. rider and she had a weave in. Like, we're not, you can't she make did. this shit up. No. Yeah. yeah. Like, you can't make this <laughs> shit up. Awesome. We went to Imanelli. Yes. We weren't done with our dinner conversation. So yes. we're like, John was parked right outside. He's like, let's just sit in the car right. and finish our conversation. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and we all sat and we were facing, um, North, North yeah. um, uh, a major street on Western. Western yeah. And so, okay, I was in the back seat driver's side. Mm-hmm. Rosa was in the back seat passenger, passenger side, and you were in the front seat right. passenger side. So um, we were just talking, oh, he was just talking, 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 talking until maybe like twelve thirty. I mean, we probably finished dinner at ten, and we yeah. were still talking right. about just crazy stuff. And so, okay, time to go. Bye, John. See you later. That time, I mean. I didn't bother to look where what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I opened the door. Mm-hmm. It's twelve thirty. Who thinks there's yeah. going to be a biker racing down Western <laughs> Avenue? I opened the door. You know, yeah. somebody falls, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And you just see hair my fly. life flash before my eyes. Oh my yeah, god. I'm going to have to like sell everything I own. Oh my yeah. god! Like all this stuff. Did they run into the door, or yeah. did you hit them as they were I passing? I hit them. Thank right. God. That's right. Yeah, better. because it could have been. Yeah. So this person flipped. And they fell face down. So, um, yeah. and they had a she hair had, piece. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A mm-hmm. small hair piece. Yeah. I thought she got scalped on the ass. <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> it was, it was ridiculous. And that's like, <gasps> yeah. Because yeah. it like went flying and twirled in the air. Yeah. And we were like, what oh, the hell? God. And she yeah. got scalped. I freaked out. Yeah. She was like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you going? I was like, bitch. Did she have a light, like on her bike no. or anything? No, but I didn't even bother to look. Yeah. You know, no, but she did. I mean, sometimes if they have a light, you'll see, like you'll see it kind of at night. absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, my God, it's so it was so bad, and then it's like, and they thought nothing happened. Her, she was totally fine. Yeah, she was like, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> 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 Sorry, oh, I'm scared. Yeah, for real, because that totally freaked me out too. Well, I like I ride my bike to work sometimes, and like car, you know, I'm I'm on both sides of it because I have a car too. Yeah, and like still, when I see a bike ride, I freak the fuck out like yes. every other car. Yes. 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 But when I'm on my bike, I, you know, it's the opposite where I'm really defensive and right. like try to, you know, because you don't want to drive 
too close to the other cars that are parked because you're afraid that oh, they're going to open yeah. the door and kill you. Yeah. But then you mm. don't want to drive too much on the street because yeah. you're going to get by a car. So it's actually very, yeah. very crazy. It yeah. is very crazy. So it's like, like side streets. And, right. Because whenever I see bikers, it, it does make me nervous. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you never know what the hell could happen if they're driving. You know, like you're right next to them. You're driving in there alongside you, and somebody opens their door, and they get sprawled out into the street. Right. You know, and then there you are. Yeah. Yeah. But but that's what it is. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And then as a driver, (laughs) I'm like, what? What the hell is this line? What's? I've never seen this line before. Or what's? Oh right. New light on the traffic light. Yeah. What is that? What's going on? Biking is taking over. And my dad was saying before, he was like, I liked it. And I do remember when I was a kid, my dad, he was like, I liked it the way it was before. They used to go on the opposite. They used to go yes. into oncoming traffic. It's like, because you could see them, right. you know, because they were on the opposite side. And they could side. see you. And they could see you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So even like, if you were parked and they were coming toward you, right. there they are. You know, so if they're driving the and you open the door, you see somebody's exactly. in the Exactly. Exactly. All this shit started happening when they, when they what? Switch a rude. They switch through the lanes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. You're right. Yeah. See? Uh-huh. So Bullish. stupid. And, then, you know, a lot of bike riders don't follow the rules. Like, no, I, I mean, yeah, I try to to my best it. ability, but a lot of them will, will drive on the wrong side yeah. of the street. Sometimes it looks like they're, they're, they act like they're at the park. Yeah. Like, they're just, like, dry, you know, they're riding their bike, like, not even yeah. thinking, you and know? Like, the You're going to be careful. Thing in the back, like, really? Oh, oh my God. yeah. When That's the, the worst. Yeah. And they have the, oh, yeah. I see them all the time. They got the little wagon. In the middle of traffic. In the middle of traffic. I was like, ooh. I, I don't so see. It's not that you're a bad bike rider. I don't trust the other stupid exactly. motherfuckers that are driving everywhere. Exactly. How could you trust? Like, how could you trust this little piece of metal to keep yeah. your children safe? Right. You can't even see behind you. Right. Your, your kids could have been left off two blocks <laughs> before. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know. Uh, if a bolt got loose or something. Right. You know what I and mean? you're just like, you know, happy go lucky, you're going down the street. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I can't even believe it. I know. It but I, but I had to. I had to. Forced my boyfriend to start wearing a helmet. Oh yeah! Like yeah, first, yeah. I tried to guilt him into it, so I got. Him I a saw helmet. he had it. I, yeah, well, he I did. got him a helmet for his birthday, and he did, just didn't wear it. Yeah. Because I thought the guilt he right, would wear it. didn't right. work, and yeah. I try. I never force him to do anything. This is the only time I've ever done that. Uh-huh. Um. So the you know the other day I gave him like a very stern talking yeah. to, and I said this is the last time I'm ever gonna say this. Yeah. But you know, and I gave him a long winded reasoning why right of course. and then to you know at which point he sent me an article about why you shouldn't wear a helmet and then uh. i sent him <laughs> counter articles about why you should but now he's great he got himself a different helmet that's less that's lightweight oh helmet. good okay. so it's so less intrusive yeah. 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 yeah now yeah. you feel more comfortable yeah exactly because it is it's dangerous it is yeah. And plus, when he was um when he was at Burning Man, I think he was on an acid trip. And during, oh, the, man. during the acid trip, he came to a realization that he needs to listen to everything I say. What? <laughs> really? He's like, I need to listen to everything Manny says. That is so <laughs> really cute. Yeah. Yeah. So oh now, so he's God. like, all right, I have to listen to what you say. Now, man, like Burning Man, I am so intrigued. I am so intrigued. What is I, that? Basically. It's in the middle of the Nevada desert. Yep. Uh-huh. 70,000 people converge onto the desert once a year, and they create a city. Yeah. Basically, um, you bring everything that you need to survive with you. Mm-hmm. Um, once you're there, you can't buy anything except for ice. It's like the only Xanax. thing you can buy. You can't buy anything. Yeah. You have to, you have to use Xanax <laughs> if you want Xanax. Um, and there's not even a barter system. There's a misconception that people oh. think it's like a barter system. It's not. You can give stuff to people, but it's just of your own free will. I if you see. want to give it, you can, but you don't expect anything. Anything in return. in return. Oh wow! But he'll. But we'll have him on the show, and he'll talk a little more yeah. in detail about it. But it's um super interesting. You know, I don't know if it's my cup of tea. I mean, he was talking about the sandstorms and oh all shit, this stuff. really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I might consider doing it, but it's it just seems like it's like ten days yeah. in the middle of the desert. That's intense. Porta potty city. Yeah. And, it's like know, do you take a shower? I mean, I, like, what do you what do you do? I mean, you, they had a shower that they created. Oh, I see. Okay, but most people just use like wet wipes. And, oh, okay, gotcha. Or like you know the water, or yeah. whatever. Like just kind of wipe themselves down. Wipe themselves down. You yeah. get you get the you know the girls in your case or the boys in my case. Yeah. And you wipe them down. <laughs> <laughs> 
Man, yes. that's crazy. It's, I know. And, you know, I'm. it's kind of up my alley because I've gone to, like, yoga retreats. Yeah, and like, in I'm Guatemala, super intrigued. But, yeah. but I don't know. I don't know if it's, it doesn't seem like a relaxing thing at yeah. all. Like, yeah. it's no. not that at all. Yeah. It's just experience after experience. Yes, and it's very hot. Like, what course. sorts of experiences? Well, like, one camp, like, they have all these different camps. One camp will be, like, a bunch of art installations mm. that you can, like, walk through and experience and be part of. And then the next mm. camp will be, like, a bunch of hammocks that you can go and like yeah. lay down. And the next yeah. camp, whatever. It's anything you can think of. And it just, well, he said one camp was playing like a movie. Oh, you know, really? Watch a movie. Oh my God, that's so cool. Like in the middle of the night, you just walk by it and you can watch a movie. That's that is it. awesome. They created like a movie screen in the middle of the desert. Damn. Where is this? Nevada. Nevada. Really? And they do it once a year. And um, I guess it's called Burning Man because at the end they burn a man. Oh. <laughs> they burn like this, not an actual It's like man. an effigy. An like effigy, an, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. But, and I, I think, burn a man. Yeah, they don't actually burn a man, but and I think the theory or the um, like their their motto is leave no trace. So you're supposed oh. to go there and not leave any you know any trace at all that anybody was there. Oh my so, god, that is awesome. Yeah. I mean, it does. It seems like very beautiful and spirit, like a spiritual thing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like that's this way I take it, and that's why I find it so intriguing. Yeah. You know. But man, I would have to like pack like about ten tubes of chapstick and lotion and stuff for all the dryness. Yeah. Oh my god. But we know we'll we'll talk to him about it. Yeah, that would be totally awesome. Yeah. It'll be super super interesting. Hell yeah. Um. Well, I think that's uh that's all the time we have for today. Yeah. Like I think yeah. we covered like quite a few things. You know, we kind of yeah, you know totally. got into life changes and mm-hmm. you know. Rose yeah, is still like totally sleepy from oh her life change. God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, and you know, it is pretty after this year we're gonna talk about the change of life. Oh <laughs> shit. Oh, yeah, oh. we're getting beach. Yeah, we are getting beach. Yeah. 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 Which is really cool. I think it's cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thanks for listening, guys. Yes, yeah. thank you thank very you. much. Thank you so much. Be well. Ciao for now. The Lab Podcast thanks you for listening to these local-ass bitches. If you like what you heard, please share us on Twitter at Bitch Podcast, on Facebook at Lab Podcast Chicago, on Instagram at l.a.b. underscore podcast, or visit our website, www.labpodcast.com.